Hello, nurses. This is Camp with Nursing Camp, and this is Cardiac Camp where I'm covering hemodynamics. And in my previous lecture, I talked about hemodynamics, specifically the right-sided, and where I covered JVD and CVP, and that's related to your right-sided hemody hemodynamics. And when you talk about right-sided hemodynamics, they're not as acute as the left side where the right-sided hemodynamics is either it's about fluid and whether they're filled or they're empty. And that is JVD, which is a nursing observation assessment, and a CVP is central venous pressures, which is from a catheter. All right, so now we're going to move over to the left-sided. And when we're looking at left-sided, and we're, looking, we're talking about fluid. And when we're talking about fluid, we're talking about the left sided. The left side's a Q. And in my previous lecture, we just dissected the heart. And we said there's there's two sides of the heart. You have the right side versus the left side. Right sided problems are generally chronic. They're not really that acute. They are problematic. However, left side, you need to do something now. Because it is an acute problem because left and lungs. And if it fills up in the lungs, that becomes a problem. And these are my scribble notes. All right, next. So left-sided heart failure, left-sided problems. And what are we talking about? Well, we're going to talk specifically about PAWP or PCWP. And what that is, is that pulmonary artery wedge pressure. Now, this is specifically from a swan. And when you have a swan and you're doing these measurements, what you're doing is you have a swan that's going through this heart. And we, it's going to go through the right atrium, through the tricuspid, and it's going to go out the pulmonic valve. And it's going to get wedged into this little section here. And that's called a wedge pressure. Well, that wedge pressure is acute because you're wedging right here in the pulmonary artery. And that is a problem. Because, so when you're wedging somebody, that wedge pressures can be anywhere from 8 to 12. And so basic principles, we knew CVP, right? We talked about that earlier, 8 to uh, um, 4 to 8. And we said less than 4 is dry and greater than 8 is wet. Remember, we're talking about fluid. Well, wedge pressure does the same thing. It's talking about fluid. So the greater the number means they're more wet. Okay. And if it's less than 8, that means they are dry. So when we're talking about wedge pressures, we're looking at the left side. More specifically, left atrium. And we're looking at that pressure that's built up in the lungs. And this is generally a, a sepsis question. So you see wedge pressures in a question, um, and you have measurements. You're in an acute question, and this is sepsis. And then generally the question is, when it comes down to it, you're looking at wedge pressures, which we said are 8 to 12. Well, the questions are generally based on volume. Okay, And the principle is, is that you fill the pump, before you squeeze. And with that principle is based on this. If a wedge pressure is says that there adequately has volume in it, okay, and we're talking about their body, we try to squeeze this vessel, okay, to increase the blood into the heart and then therefore the blood pressure will increase and this is an important concept because in sepsis the patient vasodilates and we talked about this with tachycardia the heart tries to increase the heart rate to compensate for this but that only works for so long but the blood pressure will start to decrease and so we have to fill them up with fluid so that's why generally in septic patients, we increase the fluid and fill them up. And once we fill them up, then we squeeze. And when we squeeze, we will 
given vasopressors, like LevoFed or something like that. So this is how the questions work. When you have a patient who's septic and you have a wedge pressure, the next nursing action is generally, you know, um, what's the anticipated findings, okay? You have a wedge pressure of, of um, seven, okay? What's the next initial action? Well, the next initial action is that while they're dry, it won't be give medications, okay? Because if you give medications and this patient's dry, what's going to happen is, is that this is going to happen. You're going to squeeze that vessel, and it's not going to increase their blood pressure. So if you have a wedge pressure that's 7, the correct response is increased fluids or normal saline. So you fill the pump, you check the wedge pressure, then you squeeze. And then you have an increase of blood pressure. So those are my hemodynamic measurements, more for left-sided. So we talked about this two different types. There's right-sided versus left-sided. Right-sided is CVP and JVD. JVD needs to be greater than, um, less than 4. If it's greater than 4, they have too much fluid. Okay? That could either be cardiac tamponade or too much fluid. CVP is generally 4 to 8. Less than 4 is they are dry. Greater than 8, they are filled, requiring Lasix, or they could be squeezed. Then we have left-sided measurements, PAWP, which is wedge pressures, which are 8 to 12. 8 less than 8 is dry, and greater than 12 is wet and filled. My name is Nursing Camp. This is my hemodynamic lecture on right-sided versus left-sided hemodynamics. Follow me on Pinterest and Facebook, Nursing Camp or nursingcamp.com. These are my scribble notes. Nurse on.